Hi guys, it's me, Eden. You know I said I'd make part two about part two another day, but I've decided to make it part two today. I think I even transmitted this comic book sale. <laughs> you must have said, George. The artwork is really bad, and I'm pretty sure I did misspell some words. Let's get out of here, Sam. No, 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 crackers, this is it, said George. <coughs> They didn't misspell it some more. They didn't misspell it some more. George and Harold ran to the wind, ran to the toy window, and looked up, looked up. There they saw two evil twins. There are two evil twins sneaking home, carrying their beloved pet, beloved pet twins. Susan Crackers have no idea what's going on, said George. Thinking those guys are us. How in the world are we going to stop us? As us, as Harold. <coughs> Chapter 10, Hypno Horror. George and Hill knew exactly where those two evil where, where those two evil twins had taken crackers and suits to the same place they would would take them. They would have taken them to their, their tree house. So Hills dashed on as fast as they could. Then they climbed up the to the the treehouse ladder, ladder and as quietly as they could. <laughs> But when, they <coughs> but when they peeked inside, they saw something that was 389 times worse than they had ever met. The evil twins are having time to be a pencil with a three You will obey every command, said evil here. Yes, evil George, and you'll be really wicked from now on, too. George Hill gasped, which is actually not a very smart thing to do if you're trying to go. If you're trying to go. Go unnoticed. <laughs> hey, look, son. Shy you will hear Gaspers! Gaspers! Go, go! Shy you will do what you did. pets. <coughs> Crackers in the moon. The day spirit pterodactyl shook his head and looked a little confused. A little confused, but soon immediately sprung into action. He lunged at George and Hill, grabbed them by their t shirt. Their shirts and yanked them high into the yanked them on them yanked them to the ground. Hey, hey, said Evil George, those kids look like us. What should we do with them? We can't take any chances, said Evil Harold. Then he called to Sue and he loud com and commanded words. Destroy a wicked oh wicked hamster. Chapter eleven Crackers rescue. <coughs> Crackers did not understand what was going on. But the plucky pterodactyl knew that something needed to be done, and quickly, with a sudden whoosh of flapping wings, Cracker swooped in, grabbed George and Hale from the relentless little paws of their raging robotic rodent rival. Oh no, sweet Hale! Cracker is going to fly us out into the air and drop us. Where do? Actually, I think he's trying to rescue us," said George. But he's got, but he got hypnotized. Just like Sue said. Just like Sue said. Why on earth did he do the opposite of what he was going to do? And how come all our pronouns are gay? It's allies. It's allies. Asked George. <coughs> <coughs> Let's not worry about that now, Sam. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave Sue behind for George Torrance, Sam. We'll come back with Sue. The free burns. Which is the school and head upstairs to the library. Hey, that looks like a pet pterodactyl, said Mr. Crow, as our heroes pushed him past. Pushed past him. Let me pet him, let me pet him, Mr. Crow cried, keep chasing after them. George and Hill and Crackers finally reached the library just in time to see Sue and their evil twins smash the ceiling with a terrible crash. You losers won't get away from us this time, said Evil, said evil Hill. Definitely, George and Hill and Crackers tumbled into the purple body, slammed the door shut, and and quickly reset the controls. <laughs> Mr. Crump and Sue pounded on the door of the purple body while George and Hill's evil twin shook the malfunctioning tire scene from side to side. All at once, an orange light started flashing lightly. The purple body began to shake. And wobble violently. Then the entire room lit with an explosive burst of lightning as the purple pie and everyone around it disappeared to one Chapter 12 Kablasmic 
Suddenly, there was another green flashlight. Everyone around the purple pie flew up in different directions. Then the purple pie stopped shaking and wobbling and switched into suit into shutdown mode. <clears throat> George and Helen Crackers beat down. Look, said Hill. There are a books in this library. You must react to it only. Right? But we've got to be sure. But we've got to be but we've, but we've got to be sure, cried George. The two boys took crackers into Helen's book bag and crept uh, into the hallway as they peered into the windows of, of nearby classrooms. They saw they saw room after room of heartbroken discipline and, and despite looking children. Soon, so, some were staying in corners weeping. <coughs> some were staying in corners weeping. We, we, man, others were saying a lot of dudes were wearing humiliating hats. While still others was, were, were unbelievably degradating. The degrading sentences over and over the chalkboard as their teachers rifled through their lunchboxes, stealing all the best dessert. These teachers are so mean. Yep, said George, said George. We're back in our own reality. I never thought I'd say it, said Hill. But it's good to be on. Two tree hours, cried George. Chapter 13, Purple Pie People Unite. Seconds after George and Hill and Crackers left the library, four confused beings from an alternate dimension began to stare. Evil George, evil Aaron, evil Sue, and nice Mr. Crump. Ron stumbled to the same time the strange empty library, rubbing their hands and, and looking around curiously. Let's see, George, the library has no books on the shelves. Hmm, said Evil here it is. Harold, it looks like we've entered some kind of alternate universe, an ideological reality where everything is backwards. Backwards, eh? said George. We could do quite well in a place like this. He walked over to the drinky bar. <coughs> See, went, <coughs> backwards. Backwards, eh? See, evil George. We could do quite well in this place like this. He walked over to the drinking bar and flashed some wine and nice Mr. Crump's face. Now he's back to her. Ma. Suddenly, nice Mr. Crump's confused smile turned into an evil frown. He ripped off his clothes and tiny red curtain. Tiny curtain from a nearby window and we ain't around the Then evil George and evil, and evil hit George and a bad toupee. <coughs> and the <coughs> and the Pernice's principal stood before them, snarling angrily through his flared nostrils. I am Captain Blunderpants, she said in a thunderous voice. Chapter 14. The, the chapter was something bad. Wait, there was something still happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the, the, the tree, I think at the tree, I stored to help grab some supplies before hanging off the safe suit. We'll need uh, three hypno rings, said George. George? Said George? To change Shulu back to his old self again. Cool, said Hill. And we, be and we better take the rest of his extra straight superpower juice. Just in case, good idea, said George. <laughs> the two friends and stuffed their supplies and their pet and their pet turned out onto their book bags and, and head toward and head down the tree outside. Just where the heck you think you're going? Asked the commander. Was it? Asking the commander. Eh. Was that the bottom of the ladder? It was George's dad, and he didn't seem very happy. Uh, said George, we, we need to go back to school for something. Yes, yeah, we forgot something. Well, we'll have to wait until tomorrow, said George's dad. We'll have dinner with the Hutchinsons. Remember? Tonight, remember? Oh, yeah. <coughs> so George's grandparents say, we almost know. Well, you're just in time for dinner, said George's dad. Go inside and wash up. But the band, the entire place, is, the, the, the entire world is in our hands, cried him. And the band, the entire world can wait until tomorrow, said George's dad. Mm -hmm. Chapter 15, Super Supper. <laughs> After they washed their hands, the two boys went to the dining room. And George's parents had prepared a big head. A big meal, and everybody waited patiently for George and Hale to join them. Hale's mom, sister, and grandpa were 
of where I'm with George, where, where they are. Wow, George's mom, dad, and his great grandma. Hello, baby, said George's great grandma. What have you boys been up to today? Nothing, said George. And she hugged his great grandma. We made you, we made you a grand, we, we made you, we made you and Grandpa a kind of book yesterday, said Harold. You did have the house, Grandpa? Well, let's have a look. George stuff shovels with his book bag. <coughs> Taking things out and laying them on the table. Here is somewhere. It's here somewhere, he said. Finally, he pointed out two comments of their latest son, but the adventures of Boxer Boy and Great Granny Girdle. <clears throat> it's about how you guys turn into superheroes and save the world and stuff, said George. To George. I drew the picture, said him. Well, that's very nice, boys, said George. Said. Now sit down and let. Now sit down and let's. <clears throat> we can't, said George. We've got to go now. It's a really important. George and his grandparents poured themselves a glass of juice. And, and began reading their new comic book. Their new comic books while the, while the boys continued arguing with George's dad. Chapter 16. Yeah, the, the Adventure. The Adventure of Boxer Boy and Great Granny Girl. And it can do well. But George being a hell of a hunter. Everybody knows that great. Everybody knows that grandparents are kind of dorky. He tells them, dudes. Where does this Willie throw his clock in the air? He wanted to see time fly. Ha ha ha. They call your business and nicknames in public. public? Hello, babies. Ha ha. And they have, and they have no sense of what things cost. Here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a nickel. Why don't you buy a video game with it? Thanks, I will. But grandparents are still cool for so long. Either. We're all in the... And we didn't, and we don't think anyone can. I'm gonna lay bust the bar on the shelf. You better step on my head. You, you step aside. You bother, you bother me. Wag out of here. <coughs> <coughs> and so everything was cool until one day a strange new store opened up downtown. They were selling robots. Hey kids, trading your old worn out grandparents for the latest in Robo Geezer technology. Cool, they're tons better than the regular grandparents. They tell if they just was four feet long and smells like pee. Guy dances at the old folks' home. Ha <laughs> ha, they call it cooling. Hey, the public. Hey Thor, yo, what up, dog? And best of all, they have no sense of things us. He has $10,000 for a candy bar. <laughs> Soon every kid in town is training their old, they're in their, in training in their old grandparents. Hey, what's going on? Nothing. Why are you taking us? Nowhere. <coughs> For brand new Robo Grays and, and Grandpa Tron 2000s. Wow, cool. I love my new, I love my new Robo Geezers. Soon as there is only two real grandparents left in town. <coughs> Try a thing, would you? You better not. You're gonna yell. No, you'll get a whooping. No way! <coughs> anyway, one day, George and Alan's grandparents were downtown. Something fishy is going on in there. Hmm. So they suck inside the room. Shh. So, hey, look! He opened the door and saw a tragic discovery. Hey, hey, all the grandparents in town got totally captured. Oh my. <coughs> we got to say those old folks, pal. Look, a whole box of card keys. Mmm. Let's get those geezers for now and just in case. Like geezers so much like. Do you know the next week? In a few days, in a few more days, those old folks will be in there under our control. Cool. Then I will get them some of those. How will you do that? Easy. I've got a whole box of screen power heart candies in the other room. Old people love heart candies. I know. I know. Mm. Later. Mm. Those candies were good. I feel strong. Me too. I feel powerful. 
Oh no, oh no, those guys ain't all my superpower. Superpower on candy. Uh oh. Georgia Hill's grandparents join hands, keys are powers, and three. They spin around and around. <coughs> Soon they will transfer. I'm Boxer Boy. I'm Great Granny Girdle. I'm out of here. I'm with you. The bad guys ran upstairs. They got into a. Into, got into the UFO on top of a building. And took off. Con! Con! I love geezers! Attack class of 20 Great Granny Girdle! Suddenly, all the roller geezers in town transfer, and off they flew. The robot geezers attacked, but Box the Boy and Great Grand Girl were. <coughs> Boxer, speeding electric scooter, zoom, more powerful than Boxer. Uh, adult diapers, bunk, and it'll delete telephones without breaking the hip. Whee! That's too many of them. I have an idea. Let them chase you for a while. So the robots all chase Great Granny Girl and Boxer Boy attack this mission. Pow, hey! Punch, bam, bang, crash. Kiki, that. <coughs> then he got some paint. Nice. And then he added the fire. <coughs> and the final finishing touch. Hey, Robo Dorks! Look! <coughs> what? Yeah. What? Hey, yummy! The Robo Geezers tried to devour the spaceship in a wild feeding fee frenzy. They ate and ate and ate. They ate and ate, ate and ate. My friends are the tool. Then one of them bit on the fuel. Here come boom! Robo Grannies and Rapatrons are no more. We're free! Hooray for a boxer boy! And we chase a great grand girl. The and bright guys and one and two. Alright guys, and I have some news for you. Tomorrow I'm gonna do part three, a, a part three, and part four, and part four. See you tomorrow. It has two parts. Bye!